Unit 1.3, Allowable, Normal, and Shear Stress. So the course outcome that we're working on now is develop an understanding of normal and shear stress and strain. The lesson outcome is understand allowable stress and design simple connections based on allowable stress. Let's talk about material failure for a moment. We are interested in converting internal resultant loads into internal stresses. Now if the calculated internal stress equals or exceeds the material strength, that is the stress of failure, the structural member we are analyzing will fail. In other words, if our calculated stress is greater than our failure stress, that's structural failure. And that's bad. So we want to define some terms called allowable stress. And we have a term for allowable normal stress and a similar term for allowable shear stress. And we're going to say allowable stress is equal to the failure stress divided by some factor of safety. So we will call sigma allowable or tau allowable the magnitude of stress we are willing to allow in our structural member. That means this is the maximum we want to get. We don't want to go above this allowable stress level. Now, failure stress, that's the stress level at which the material we are designing with fails. And that's typically a known or a given value. In this class, it will be given in the problem statement, or else we can find it in uh, a reference material, such as a table of material strengths. The factor of safety is typically also a given value in this course. And a factor of safety must always be greater than or equal to 1. If factor of safety was less than 1, then sigma allowable would be greater than our sigma fail. And that wouldn't make any sense. So let's think about simple connection design. Here are uh, two equations now that we are becoming familiar with. Our average normal stress is equal to the internal resultant normal force divided by the cross-sectional area of the member. And sigma allowable is equal to our failure stress divided by some factor of safety. So if we substitute uh, sigma allowable for sigma average in this equation and rewrite it to solve for A, uh, this allows us to calculate a cross-sectional area for which our uh, design will not exceed some allowable stress. Here's an example. Uh, where we could put this equation to use. Suppose we are trying to design the cross-section of this rod. We do not want this rod to fail. In fact, we do not want it to, the stress in the rod to s exceed the allowable stress. So we could solve for the cross-sectional area that is needed for this rod using this equation if we know the internal normal force, which in this case is P. Now this also applies to shear stress. Our average shear stress is equal to our internal resultant shear force divided by the cross-sectional area of the member. And our allowable shear stress is equal to our failure stress divided by a factor of safety. So we will substitute our allowable shear stress into this equation and then solve for A. And now we have an, an equation for designing the cross-sectional area of a member in simple or direct shear. For example, Say we were designing the uh, diameter of the bolt that was connecting these two plates that are experiencing shear. Uh, if we know the internal force in that bolt shank, the internal shear force, uh, that would be V. And if we are, have a known allowable shear stress, we can solve for the cross-sectional area of that pin. And that is it.